Everybody's Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You are watching Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So today's episode, I wanted to talk about um, the narcissist discard versus the narcissist disregard. Okay, so first of all, just let's, let's get the discard out of the way. So to discard someone is to... The definition is to let go or throw away something that has become useless. So when a narcissist discards you, they find you useless, meaning that they can't get the amount of fuel that they used to get out of you. And some of you are thinking like, well, dang, how much more do I need to give? And the narcissist is like, you're not giving me what I need. You're not giving me what I need. And you're thinking like, I've given you everything. What more can I give you? You know, what more can I do? And you start naming all the things that you have done for her or for him. And it's just not enough. Remember that, that a narcissist is like an empty pit. It doesn't matter how much you put into that pit. It's just going to fall. It's just, it's just empty. It's just like a bottomless pit. You know, so it doesn't matter what it is, never enough. And so when a narcissist discards you, a narcissist finds you useless, even though you know that you're not useless, useless meaning that they can't get anything else out of you. They can't get any more fuel out of you, or you have wised up and put up boundaries and you won't allow them. You know, you they, they can't control you like they used to control you at one point in time. So now you've become useless to them. So they have to find someone else that they can get copious amounts of fuel. And usually it's an un unsuspecting uh, victim. There we go. An unsuspecting victim that gets pulled into that vortex where they suck this energy out of them. But there's plenty of energy, plenty of fuel, you know, from this supply because that supply really is, is innocently ignorant. They don't know what is happening, but it is a more powerful source of supply because they're full. You're empty. So you have been discarded because you have been found to be useless. Now, <clears throat> let me talk to my to my uh, my beautiful empaths out there. Empaths, you know, first of all, some of you guys say it's a curse. To be an empath is not a curse, you know, depending on how you use it. To be an empath is not a curse. We need empaths out there, empaths and super empaths, because you guys, you guys are the ones that, first of all, you feel everything. You know, you touch it, you feel, you feel everything, you feel the environment, you feel people's emotions, you feel this, you feel that, you feel this. A lot of you empaths just have not put boundaries up and, and control that, put boundaries up to know what your limitations are. And it is possible, trust me, to be an empath doesn't mean that you have to be ignorant, doesn't mean that you have to be used or stepped on. You have a gift and a gift for people, a gift for animals. You know, you, you see the veterinarians and people that rescue animals, you know, most of them are empaths. You know, you see, you know, the empaths that, or in the hospital settings, those that are helpers that feed the hungry. We need empaths in this world because you guys have a heart to help people. You have this heart. You just, you can't see people hurt like that, you know? So we need the empaths out there. But guess what? You feel everything. You you want to connect with everything. You want to fix everything. Some of you guys are rescuers. Some of you guys are codependents, you know? So, you know, for a narcissist, that's wonderful because you're trying to feel, feel, feel. And it's not the fact that they feel, feel, feel. is that they pull, 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 pull. And you give the emotions out. You give, you know, all the feely, the touchy, the emotions, the feely, the touchy, the emotions. And for a narcissist like Hannibal Lecter, they're getting, they're getting copious amounts of fuel from you. And so for you to use the term discard, remember that discard means, like it says here, to uh, throw something away and because it has become useless. Well, to a empath, no one or anything is useless. You useless, useless, you know, and you have to be careful because a lot of times empaths can also become hoarders because they can't let go of memories and the feeling to this. And, you know, so you got to be careful because, you know, to an empath, to you, your heart, it's just your characteristics. You know, this is, this is your character, characteristics, character. That is your character. You just don't find anything useless. You know, by the time you find something useless, you know, it's probably useless, but you just don't find people useless. So to, to discard a narcissist, the way you look at them is they've been hurt, you know, and they'll play on that. You know, they've been hurt. They're a wounded child. And, you know, and I, I just can't discard them. I can't find them useless because everyone has always found them useless. And, and you know, some, they're hurting so bad and they're popping you in your face. And you're like, but it's, and I understand it's painful, but they, they're hurting so bad. That's where we have to teach the empaths boundaries. You know, if they're punching you in the head, let them go, you know, and discard them. But I can't find them useless, you know, because that is just your nature. You don't find people or things useless. And so in your, you know, in your perspective, you know, to discard 
for you guys doesn't mean to find them useless. It just means to discard for you to let them go. You know, you know what? I'm heartbroken. They're hurt individuals, but I'm not going to be your punching bag. I'm not going to be your, you know, your, your I'm not going to be a carpet that you just wipe your feet on, you know, and empaths can do that. There are empaths out there that have boundaries. They understand and they have to work on it all the time because they're quick to be pulled in because they have big hearts. That's just your nature. Some of you guys are some awesome. I've seen some I've seen some empaths I want to fight, but you know, some of them are just worrisome, you know, but, but empaths, you guys are needed in this world. You guys are compassionate. You guys are empathetic. You know, uh, you just have to put up your boundaries. So to use the word discard, you know, I understand that you guys don't find things useless until you get to that, reach that point for some of you guys, when you hit that supernova and that's it for you guys, you know, and, and then you're like, this is, but later on, what happens for a true empath, you know, you, you feel bad, you know, your heart is broken. You, you, this is not your character. That is not how you operate. That is not what you do. You don't hurt people. You don't, you know, it, it just, it breaks your heart. And a lot of you guys, once you, once you do this or it really breaks your heart. A lot of you, it really, it you really struggle with it because then the biggest thing is like, am I a narcissist? Because I acted the same way that they did, you know? So, so let's just get that term, that, that discard out of the way. So now let's go to the term that I want to focus on in the video, which is disregard. So let me click on disregard. And you notice that narcissists have a tendency to disregard anything that does not uh, play into their agenda. They have their own agendas. They have their own mindset. Nothing else in the world matters unless it plays into their agenda. So they disregard people. They disregard conversations unless it fulfills a purpose for them. To disregard someone or to disregard means to pay no attention to ignore. Some of you guys, when not some of you guys, when you got into uh, or you met the narcissist, got into conversations with the narcissist, you noticed that um, the narcissist took interest in your conversation. And some of you guys, we had the best conversation. I wish we can go back. No, they were, they were, I want to say psychoanalyzing you. They were, they were targeting you. And what happens is um, if you listen to people that have served as uh, hostage negotiators, FBI agents, those criminologists, those that work in those fields, they'll tell you in order to make a person feel validated, you know, when you're having a conversation with them, just repeat the last few phrases that they said. Nine times out of 10, they may not have listened to anything else you said, but they pick out certain phrases that you said and they focus on those phrases. Well, to a person, for you to repeat it back to a person, it makes them feel validated like you're listening. But in actuality, most of you guys who have been in a relationship with a narcissist Ooh. noticed that you know, later on, you're like, I wish he or she would go back to the way that they were. They used to be a great listener. Now they pay no attention to what I say because it's not interesting to them because it doesn't, it's not focused on them. So think about when you're having a conversation or when you first start having a conversation, you know, the question becomes is like, you know, where are you from? Oh, you know, I'm originally from, you know, and then we traveled here. Now you're giving a lot of information. We're originally from, and you know, we traveled here and then we ended up in, in Atlanta and, you know, and when I got to Atlanta, like, oh, okay, you got to Atlanta, you know, what did you like about Atlanta? Do you like Atlanta better? Or where else? You, yeah, I really like Atlanta. You lived anywhere else? I lived in Houston, Houston, Texas, you know, oh, so which of the two do you like better? And I really like Atlanta. You know, what do you like about Atlanta? Oh, you know, that's the party place. That's like the black Hollywood. And, you know, and, and me and my girls and me and my boys used to go out and party all the time. We used to do that. We used, okay, now think about it. It looks like you guys were having a, a normal conversation and to the average person that probably doesn't have narcissism. I'm going to let you guys think about it for a minute. What just happened in that conversation? For the average person, you were building rapport and, and you were getting to know each other and asking questions. But there's only one person asking questions, right? For a person that is aware, what was happening was is that narcissist was gathering information about you. This is where you're from. You got really excited and your emotions got high when you started talking about Atlanta. You went to Houston. Houston is not some place that you you liked it, but you didn't like as much. But Atlanta was the hot spot for you. What was the hot spot? Why was the hot spot? I like to party. I like to do this. So they're getting information and they're creating that movie script in their head. And, you know, and you're thinking like, wow, this person is so interested in me. You know, oh, my gosh, you know.
Oh, what do you do? You know, and then when you got that line, what do you do? You know, what do you do for a living and everything? Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a model. You know, I, I, I model, I model earrings. You know, I, I model eyelashes. You know, whatever. You know, oh, you like that? You know, what, what industry do you like? Oh, I like, you know, and you know, one thing, one day I'm gonna get to Hollywood. And, you know, look at all the information you're putting out there. You know, one day I'm gonna get to Hollywood because my dream is to do this, and that, and this, and this. And I really would like to work for the Halle Berry, J Lo, somebody. You know, whatever, whatever. They're getting in this information and they're creating the movie script in their head. So they're trying to see what role they're going to play. Well, one thing they know, you're a party person. You like to be on the scene. You like to be out, you know, and, and this is what you do. So I need to bring in more information to you to make it seem like I'm connected to people in Hollywood or, you know, what do you like? You know, there are a lot of stars down there, you know. So now they're playing and they're trying to figure out what is it. And, and they throw a little information to see how excited you get because, you know, so think about it empaths you feel people's emotions narcissists manipulate emotions they are watching to see how you get excited what you're getting excited about when you're pitching your tone goes up and down you know what 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 is it that excites you or you know oh, okay well how did you guys end up here well you know my parents you know this and that and this and one thing that really broke my heart is when this happens so you know you know later on if i ever get into a relationship again that's one of the biggest thing that bothers me ah now you've given that information out you've just given kryptonite to your oppressor don't even know it oh so you don't like to be abandoned you don't you don't oh yeah you know because now they're going to come up with their own story about you know yeah because that's the same thing that happened to me i was i was you know and seem like the relationships are not yeah you know relationships are not you know and that's one of the biggest things you know i hate the fact that you know because that's the same thing that i went through same thing my family went through my parents you know and i hate that and you know so they're feeding into your conversation feeding into your conversation feeding into your conversation you're thinking oh my god this is just this is the person no they're mirroring you they're taking information from you and they're mirroring you and they and, the, and it's almost like they're interrogating you and they're repeating the last few things that you're saying. They're not paying attention to you. They're just trying to gather information to see how they're going to fit in. And then afterward, when they have conversations, a lot of times they're looking for something. They want to know how much you know. You know, say that they just, they cheated. They just went somewhere. So they ask you a question. Where you been? Oh, I've been such and such. Why you ask? You know, I was just wondering because I tried to call you. Oh, yeah, you know, when I was, uh, I said, uh, so you're giving them all this information. So they're like, okay, she, she doesn't know or he doesn't know. Or, you know, when they call, like, hey, what's up? And you just, blah, 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 blah. they know that you're not upset because they can tell in your, you know, but if you're quiet too, why? What's up? What's wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. Why are you asking what's wrong with me? So they already know, okay, you know something. I need to know what you know, but I'm not going to give you too much information because if I keep on walking around this topic, you'll tell a lot. Okay. Now, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, the dis, dis, the disregard is this. Once you get into the cycle of the relationship with this narcissist, you'll notice like he used to be a good listener. She used to be a good listener. But now you notice that no matter what you say, they usually, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not even listening to me. I am listening to you. What you just said was is um, your girlfriend says they'll give you the last few phrases of what you said. I am listening. I was just trying to do this, and this, and this, and this. They could be doing anything on the phone. They could be talking to a new supply, anything on this telephone. But you notice that you're it, they totally disregard you. You are irrelevant to them because you're not speaking something about them. Now, if you start complimenting them, if you start, you know, if your conversation is focused about them, you'll see them put that phone down and pay attention to you and, and have a conversation because it's all about them. But the moment you start talking about, you know, this is what happened. This is what I want to do. This is, you know, after that, they just disregard you because it does not have anything to do with them. So a narcissist is very, a, a, a selfish individual self-absorbed individual and when they excuse me when they're having conversations with you they usually have an agenda most of the things you know if you listen to the conversations you know a lot of you let's go back to that conversation and when you disregard them because i don't know you to be answering a question like where are you from i'm from you know i'm from from our georgia oh what part of georgia atlanta oh you like atlanta yeah that's cool that's cool did you grow up in atlanta oh yeah 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 i grew up in atlanta um you guys i'm back there's a little bleep in my video so you'll notice where like i was having a conversation and it cut itself off and it started back off right here where i was talking and so but just to culminate or to summarize you know what i was talking about on the video and i apologize for the abrupt interruption in between the the filming but you know to summarize what i was talking about you know the fact that um they totally disregard you 
you know, and that is in their character. Those, that's the type of person that they are, that if you're not focused on them, if, if they, the focus and the conversation is not about them, the only time that they're giving you that much attention is when they're trying to get stuff out of you. Even when, you know, if you plan on dis, discarding them, you know, they'll pull you in and they'll give you some of the old stuff that you had. They'll, they'll pay attention to you. But remember, a lot of times in the conversations, you'll notice that they may say the last few things that you said. Anybody can halfway listen to someone, but the effective listening or, you know, th that you're really interested in a person, they're not going to give you all that. Uh, and when I say that, I mean that later on, as they have gotten comfortable in the relationship, you know, they really have disregarded you, that you're not as, re as, as relevant as you thought you were. And you really find out the character of this narcissist that most people are irrelevant to narcissists. If you can't feed them, if you can't, you know, everything to them has an ulterior motive. And so if the focus is not on them, if it's not something that they're interesting, is not something that they can use, is not something that makes them look good, you know, then really it, it is it is irrelevant to them. It's really um, disregarded, you know, is really unimportant, you know, ignored. And a lot of times you come back and have a conversation with them and say, but you don't even listen to me. They give you pieces and parts of it, but you know, in your heart, you know, in your heart that that person did not give you their undivided attention. I think that's only respectful when you're in a relationship, you know, that, uh, and, and, and one of the things I've learned throughout time, uh, when I was in the military, I had a first sergeant and, uh, whether he was listening or not, it didn't matter, but he sure what he would do is, is, is when you came into the office to talk to him, he would take the phone is when we, before we had the cell phones. Um, but you know, he would take the phone off the hook and then focus his attention on you and listen to what you had to say and would, would actually, um, talk back and forth with you. Now he could have used some, you know, uh, what what the guy, the interrogator said, you know, use those communication skills to show that a person is interested. A lot of things that we learn in counseling, you know, that, that to act, active listening and, and responding back and, and, um, you know, repeating what that person says. And so let me, uh, you know, these are techniques that we learn in therapy, you know, repeat what they said, you know, so what I hear you saying is, but when you really hear a person, okay, so what I hear you saying is, and what I'm understanding that you're saying is this and that and this and this. And the person like, exactly, you know, uh, that what we call motivational interviewing, you know, and a lot of times, uh, narcissists can't handle that either when you repeat back to them what they're saying and when they realize you know that you're paying attention and you repeat it back what they're saying they'll number one distract you or they will totally uh, refocus the conversation or they hate the fact that you're repeating what they're saying so what i hear you saying is, is that you stole the car no see you you're misunderstanding what i'm saying you're meant but i'm just saying what you just said to me Stop doing that. I hate that psycho mumbo jumbo stuff. I remember hearing that in the military myself. But what I'm saying is that what you just said to me, that's what I'm understanding. Well, you're understanding wrong. Well, help me to understand. Explain to me what you're saying. And you notice that a lot of times they're circumstantial and tangential, meaning that circumstantial mean they talk in circles. Tangential mean they go off on a tangent, you know, and they'll totally get off of one topic and just talk, 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 talk. It's, it's the way that their mind processes. And on top of that, a lot of times is to get you off off topic, get you off the facts because you're on them. But usually they, they disregard most of the things that you say. If it's not focused on them, it's not their agenda. If it's not something that they want to hear, you know, to them is uninteresting. Mm -hmm. They're to themselves. They are interesting. So if you're not focused on them, you are not. They're not interested. They're totally disregarding what you're saying. And I know a lot of you know and understand that because in your relationships, you felt unheard. You felt unappreciated. You, you know, it's, it's like talking to a wall. It's like they could care less what you're talking about. There's nothing interesting, you know, uh, to talk about, you know, Know, it's not it's, it's not interesting but it's almost like you, you're in a relationship where the other person has no respect for conversation with you at all and so that's the end of this video I had to put those two together but thank you guys so much for listening thank you so much for following my youtube channel please go and check out a lot of times in my community tab i also um post uh when i when i've done a new podcast so if you don't have pod being downloaded onto your telephone, when you click on it, it'll ask if you want to download it or open up that app, you know, so you can go or you can just go to the pod being site. Uh, and I think you can create an account and you can follow me on pod bean. Um, usually I think within like the 12 hours or something like that, it up when it uploads, it'll upload into like iTunes, Google play, Spotify, iHeartRadio. you know, it'll uh, upload in there so you can go and listen to it as well. But pod bean, you know, if you register for pod bean, it is free. 
story and then you can just go and you follow me on um, Podbean and that's where I, I that's the platform that I use to um, do my podcast so I did do another podcast uh, you guys be patient with me because I have a lot of different platforms that I work on I'm still working on the classes I have not forgotten I'm working on the classes because I'm simultaneously working on my book at the same time. But I really appreciate you guys. You know, please subscribe. I'm Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Make sure, make sure, make sure you go to my mentor's YouTube channel. It is Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper, where you can get information from a spiritual perspective, a biblical perspective, um, well-versed. Uh, very informative. Uh, whether you are a believer in the Bible or not, she breaks it down where it's understandable to you and then lets you apply it to the way that you understand it. So nobody's forcing you to be a Christian, so don't even worry about it. Now, those of you that are and also are looking for maybe, um, you know, at this time where we're slowly beginning to open up and, and you don't really have a church to attend at this particular time, you're always welcome to go and look for her on Facebook. Uh, it's under Apostle Helen, I think it's Apostle Helen Sadler uh, on, on Facebook book and you can follow her because she does other videos uh you know church videos ministry videos that you can follow as well i believe in the whole person concept i believe in the soul which is the psyche you know the 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 mental health portion i do believe in the physical health the physiological aspect you know eating health wise taking care of yourself and i do believe in spiritual care you know whatever your spiritual care is you know i just happen to be a believer that is my pastor so you go check out her youtube channel helen sadler destiny helper make sure you sure that share the videos this is just a comfortable chair i like rocking back and forth and hopefully it's not distracting to you guys but um, it's very comfortable but um anyway thank you guys so much i do have a book out is overcoming hold on no it's not that's my channel unmasking the illusion of perfection you can find it underneath my youtube channel you can find it on amazon or barnes and nobles if you are looking for a counselor and you are outside the state of Washington, you can go to betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen, and you can vet counselors. Now, I am not online through BetterHelp, um, but you can vet counselors, and there'll be count licensed counselors within your state at a nominal fee. You get a 10% discount just by using my link. It is a sponsored link, so you'll get a 10% discount uh, by using my sponsored link. And um, also, if you're having financial dis difficulties, let them know they will work with you and providing you with grants. And you can, you know, when you're looking for the counselor, a lot of them don't understand when you say narcissist abuse. Narcissist abuse is domestic violence. Domestic violence that is probably perpetrated by a person that may have narcissistic personality disorder, but it is um, domestic violence. So when you use that language, domestic violence, psychological abuse, psychological manipulation, sexual abuse, PTSD, complex PTSD, do you understand when they manipulate? manipulate you in the court system. That's the kind of stuff that most people understand. But when you say narcissist abuse, they don't know how to put the two together yet, you know. So use the terminology of domestic violence. And when you talk to people or you're vetting a counselor, use that type of language and they'll understand what you're talking about. Those of you that are looking for coaching, you can look under my under my YouTube video is Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. You're welcome to email me and I will provide you with fees. I'm still offering discounted um, fees as I'm working on creating online classes. Um, the online classes that I'm creating, I would like to offer the first uh, the first course for free. Uh, no, you won't be certified and being an art slayer. So I have one of my subscribers ask that question and they're not certified classes. But I mean, I can provide you with a certificate if you feel, you know, and put my name on there and tell, tell you thank you. Uh, but they're not certified classes, but they're educational classes to help you. A lot of times, you know, you have to think a lot of you have been in these narcissistic relationships for a very long time. And so they have manipulated you and they have trauma bonded you for so long that sometimes it takes a while to unwind you and to retrain you. You know, it's like, um, what is it called when you when a person comes from war? Um, and, and we have, you know, when, when they come in out of a war zone, they have to be debriefed. How are you going to feel? What you witness, you know, when you come back into the, 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 the regular world, you know, into the into the U.S., you know, what to expect, how your body's going to react. If you start feeling this, if you start having nightmares, they're being debriefed. And so a lot of times the way that I focus on creating the classes, you know, I, I look at it as I'm going to debrief you. I'm going to teach you and train you about domestic violence, to teach you about the narcissist abuse, to help you to understand how you were manipulated and how you were trained to think. What I find is that when you provide people with psychoeducation, when you provide them with education about what has happened, majority of you guys that have been watching videos, a lot of you say that it has really helped you. You really have changed the way you thought. You really have changed. And a lot of you have even emailed and say, finally, I'm free. You know, and the videos have helped. And I appreciate it because that right there to me, that's a pat on the back. 
That's letting me know that I did my job. Not not pat me on the back, making me, you know, bigger than 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 he, but that lets me know that it was effective. That lets me know to keep going because it is effective in breaking down these trauma bonds, this this dysfunctional way that you have been taught to think and the way that you have been taught to to live and how you've been abused. That's my passion. To see you guys free from the bondage that you guys have been in. So it gives me great pleasure to do this. Even when I'm tired, it gives me great pleasure to do this because I know it is helping people and you guys email me let me know how it's helping if you guys send me those long emails i can't read those long emails and then as soon as i say it someone sends a, a long email and says i know you said you didn't want me to send you a long email i'll do the same thing thank you so much for it for emailing me these are my fees if you'd like to make an appointment you guys get the same email every time you know thank you so much for emailing me i don't have the opportunity don't have the time to read long extended uh emails that right there when you're doing long emails and at the end you, you get bold Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. You show sure is bold. <laughs> you show sure is confident. I don't have time to read all that. And the letters are tiny. Got to put my glasses on. Sometimes it's in the dark when I'm reading it. I don't have time to read long extended emails. That's letting me know if you have those long extended emails, that means you're wanting a consultation. You don't get that for free. You know, you pay for the services. I'm a fee for, fee for service provider. You know, so when you send those long ones, that lets me know you want, you don't want a free, you're not going to get a free session, y'all. Pay the fee, and then you get my undivided attention, an hour and 45 minutes. Email me, and I'll let you know what my fees are. But thank you guys so much once again. Make sure you also, I'm on uh, uh, Facebook, so you can find me under Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You can find me under Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Once again, thank you guys so much. You guys go and be great.